May grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God, the Father, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Word of God, which is the basis of the sermon this morning, is taken from the first epistle to the Corinthians. You'll remember last Sunday was from the second book to the Corinthians, second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. This is from his first letter to that congregation in Corinth, Greece. And in his second letter, we pulled out that verse that talks about good grief. That leads to repentance. Today, we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 to 31, where we read as follows, the word of God that will be the basis of the sermon. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and that they that buy as though they possessed not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. So far the text. The name of Jesus without whom we can do nothing. Dear fellow redeemed sinners and creatures of the one true only living, creating and preserving triune God. Our text does not say time is short. Now if it did say that, that would be a true saying. Time is short. The older you get, the more you realize that time passes very quickly and your time in this world is short. In fact, in the light of all eternity, our lives are but a pinpoint. So that's true that time is short, but it doesn't say that. It says the time is short. The time, meaning the time that remains between now and the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ who created the world and he will end the world. The same one who created it will end it. And the time is short between now and when that will happen. We don't know how short, but it is short, just like time is short. This is short. Time is short, but the time is short. The time is short until Jesus comes again. That's what this means. The second coming, that's a theme of Advent. Second coming of Jesus. Be prepared. And brief is the time until then. And he is saying here to us, God is saying in the Bible, serve me now for the time is short that you can serve me. Take this opportunity that God has given you to serve the Lord. Now, most Christians know this. It's taught throughout the Bible that the world will end someday, that our Creator will uncreate the universe. And so Christians who believe the Bible, they, they know this, and I think most of them believe it. But the problem is, even though we know it and believe it, sometimes we really fail to act upon it. And what does it mean to act upon this truth that the time is short until the time of Judgment Day? Because we have a tendency in our sinful natures, our old man, our sinful flesh, to act as if we have plenty of time. It's going to be far off in the distant future. But the Bible says, now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works 
of darkness. I will not preach to you sweet nothings. If you want a preacher and a church that will preach you to sleep with sweet nothings, you're in the wrong church. Now is the time. Now is the time to do something, Christians. The time is short. We must have only one aim in our life. We must have singleness of purpose. Now if we had plenty of time, and the, the time until judgment was a long way off, then we might try three things at once. But as we have very little time, we better attend to only one thing. And that is the glory of God. To give our souls to the glory of God. What does that mean? It means when we choose friends, we do it to the glory of God. When we choose our occupation, we do it to the glory of God. We have only one aim in mind. As the Bible says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Because the time is short. Work for God. Glorify God. Do His work in this world. Help God to save souls for heaven. And how do we do that? By sharing this word of God, the law and the gospel, the law, the Ten Commandments. Summarize the law of God. God is a lawgiver. He has commanded us things and he is serious about it. And these laws don't change with the times. We have sinned. All people need to hear this. One of the messages of Advent is, we have sinned. That's why Jesus had to come and save us from our sins. It's not a pleasant message. It's not one we like to hear. We like to hear sweet things, that we're, we're, we're just good people. But that's not the truth. When you say we have no sin, the truth is not in us, and we deceive ourselves. But there's also the gospel, and that is the message that God has had mercy upon us. He loves us. He wants our welfare now and forever. And to do that, he himself came down from heaven and became a true human being. Conceived in the Virgin Mary, a true man, but also true God. The unique person who could save us. For he lived a sinless life in this world under the same law of God, kept the law of God perfectly in thought, word, and deed, and then offered this immaculate body and life to crucifixion and death and burial in payment for our sins and opened to us the gates of heaven as a free gift earned by Jesus Christ. That message needs to get out. The time is short. There's people who don't believe it yet, and even people who haven't heard it yet. The Apostle Paul, who under inspiration of the Holy Ghost, wrote this text, these words. He also said elsewhere, I know whom I have believed. And would that all people know the Lord Jesus. Know the true God, the triune God, Jesus Christ being God the Son. For in knowing him, truly knowing him as Paul meant when he said, I have known whom I have believed. That means knowing him with understanding and knowing that all the Bible says is true. With that faith, we have eternal life. This seems the most pressing demand now that time is short. Because Christ said the night cometh when no man can work. It's coming soon. The time is short. 
Are you sure that your relatives have heard this? Are you sure that your friends have heard this, this law and this gospel? This is the king's business. It demands haste. The time is short. It's short, short for everyone, not ju just for Christians. Time is short for everyone in the world. Do not say that you'll get around to telling them later. Such procrastination is perilous. It could be too late. The time is short to glorify God. We also glorify God by living, as we just sang, as strangers and pilgrims on the earth. The time is short in which we can hold any possessions here. So let us not love anything here below too fondly. Let us not love these earthly possessions more than God. Let us not love them more than heaven. As it says in our text, the time is short and they that buy as though they possessed not and they that use this world as not abusing it. Yeah, we use the things of this world, but let's not abuse them by loving them. The time is short. Let's not love the things of this world. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Look at your property. Walk across your property, but remember you will not be able to walk across it much longer. Count your money, but know your wealth will not secure welfare when Christ comes. Let eternal things absorb your thoughts. Let eternal things absorb your affections. You say you want to be a Christian, but then your heart cannot be set on worldly things. And your mind cannot be set upon just learning the things of this world that the world has to teach you. Your sinful flesh gives you worldly ambitions, prompts you to wish for a good repute in society. But as a Christian, you may not have good repute in this sinful society. Christ has bought you. He's paid for you with his blood shed for your sins. He has a claim on you. You are his servant. He bought you. But what a glorious thing to be a servant of God. What a gracious master he is. But we are his servant, and the time is short. It is our peril that we take up with any pursuits inconsistent with a full surrender of ourselves to our master, the triune God. You may have finally bought the house of your dreams, your dream house. Maybe you've longed for your house that you live in now for all your life. But question this. How long will you live in your house in this world? Two years? Three years? No. No man on earth can guarantee you even three weeks. The time is short. The time is short. Jesus may come tonight. And what will you do if you have not repented of all your sins? Send for the pastor? Instead of repentance? Pastor cannot save you. Only Christ can save you and he calls you to repent. 
and believe the gospel. Picture yourself for a moment if he comes and you're living in a sin at that point. You'll be a lost spirit asking for a drop of water to cool your tongue like the rich man in hell that Jesus described in his account of the rich man in Lazarus. Maybe you've hoarded your money and said, I'll give the church of Jesus Christ nothing. Or maybe just a little bit. And what I give, I'll give grudgingly. But the Bible said, God loveth a cheerful giver. Oh, I'll make it up later, or I'll leave a lot to the church in my will, may me some people say. Don't wait, the time is short. Now is the time to carry out your good intentions. Now is the time to repent. God has made us a steward of all the things that he's given us in this world, our possessions, and he wants us to be faithful stewards. And he's told us in some parables of Jesus about the master, the Lord, who had ser servants and he entrusted them with some of his goods as stewards. And then he left for a while to use these things that he had given them and entrusted to them. And then the Lord returned, Jesus said, and he took account of the stewards. And some of the stewards were very joyful to see him come back. And they were eager and anxious to give our good report. Look, you gave me these things and I used them in your service and they produced these more things for you. But there was one servant who did not want to see his Lord return for he had wasted the goods that the Lord had given him. And when the Lord came back, he wasn't happy. He wasn't joyful. The Lord is Jesus, and he has given us things. And when he comes, we will want him to say to us, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. But the time is short to do that. We should be anxious for him to come. Anxious for us to give an account to him of what we have spent our short time here on earth doing. But some protest, well, that's going to cost me something, isn't it? Well, think of the cost if we don't. What if you're cast into the furnace of hell? What will that cost you? That's the cost of not believing in Jesus not repenting of our sins. Yes, we may have to suffer in this life for Jesus, but nothing like an eternity in hell, forsaken of God. Well, you say, well, some people might think of me as a fanatic if I did all this. They'll think less of me. Does it matter what they think or what God thinks? The time is short. Will we be poor in this world? So be it if that God wills it. But the time is short that we will be poor. Will we have sickness if God wills? Yes. But the time will be short for our sickness. I call your attention to the first part of verse 30. And they that weep as though they wept not. Yeah, we'll weep in this world. It's a sinful place. A place of sickness and death. And we weep. But let's weep as if we weep not. Because the time is short. The time is short. They that weep, weep as though they wept not. Are these gloomy words? 
in this text? Does this give us gloom when we read these words that the time is short? No. As true Christians, the fact that the time is short before Judgment Day should encourage us. It should give us joy. It should inspire us to repent all the more and serve Jesus all the more. Because we believe the promises of God that he is coming again soon. We believe in his everlasting kingdom of heaven for all believers. We believe that these eyes shall see Jesus coming on that day. We believe that these bones shall rise incorruptible and live in heaven forever for Jesus' sake. We believe that our heads will wear the crown of eternal life that Jesus has earned for us. We believe the promises of God that, as he says, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. Then these words, the time is short, aren't gloomy words. They should give us great joy. Do you think I'm exaggerating? Time is rushing on swiftly, but silently. Time only moves in one direction. And the time is short. While I speak, minutes pass, and the hour of worship is soon gone. Soon this day will be over, and another year has almost run its course. The year of our Lord, 2022. It's been 2,000 years since Jesus came, God the Son, the first time. The time is short before he comes again. So now is the time. Now is the time to save those who are on the broad road to destruction. Now is the time to cease loving this world. Now is the time to repent of sin. Now is the time to live only for Christ. Now is the time to look forward to heaven more than ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all of man's understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.